I can't. I just saw this um, this article in the Express, and it it kind of wound me up. I'm used to getting wound up about woke sort of things, but here we go. Does anyone remember the song "It's Raining Men"? Yeah, of course you do. It's an '80s smash hit. I am not even going to talk uh, try and sing it. It would be a shame. It'd be a disgrace, disgraceful version of the song. But it was a really catchy big hit. And now the lyrics are being changed to be inclusive. And it's not going to be It's Raining Men. It's going to be It's Raining Them. Portia Barry Kilby, political contributor to Young Voice UK, writer and commentator, joins me to explore this madness. Hello. Hi, Nick. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. Now, I'm sounding a bit flippant but actually i'm sick to death of it i i, I mean you you you've probably looked at this and 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 uh, rolled your eyes as well but what is this all about enlighten enlighten our listeners i wish i could enlighten you uh when i first read it i thought it was satire honestly it's how how do you tell the difference between reality and fiction the reality is too hard to believe this is all reworked so as to be more inclusive. So rather than it's raining men, it's raining them. It's not more inclusive. It's promotion of an ideology. And it stops something that's entertainment and starts being something which is boring and tiresome. Well, and, and do you see what, what, what kind of gets me here? is the, 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 the idea that, that they push the idea that this song, which was written by um, Paul Schaefer, I think, back in 1982. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so you sound far too young to have ever been. <laughs> too kind. But, but it, they're, they're saying, well, it's been written to mark World Pride Month. Well, fine. I've got no, no issues. World Pride Month, that's fine. But actually, you know, when they go and say, well, the aim is to make everyone feel included, and to celebrate non-binary and transgender artists. Well, why not just write a song about that now? Rather go back and change hits from my youth and other people's youth. I, I don't get it. Exactly. No, exactly. Like, write your own song and make it good rather than co-opting an old song and writing, rewriting it badly. It doesn't even make sense, right? If you have it's raining men, that makes sense. It's raining them with them as a so-called pronoun. That makes no sense. That's like saying it's raining him. Um, it's just not done very well. <laughs> but but I, I think, though, look, if we're going to... Uh, if I, there was part of me, and you can tell I'm a little lost of words, which is a bit worrying really in my job at the moment. But in the, in, in the last few months, I actually thought we were beginning to win the war against woke. I kind of felt if you shine a light on it, shine a light on some of the stupidity as well. If you do that, mm -hmm. you kind of might start winning the war. And, and sometimes I think ridicule is good. Now, this is one reference, right, in the song. And the reference to Mother Nature being a single woman has been changed to they're a single person. It's like yeah. I, I, I almost want to hear the song to see just like, you know, how does that work out? I mean, but, I listened to it earlier, Nick, and I wish I could tell, tell you it gets better, but it really doesn't. It is so. And in the original music video, you have the weather girls, <laughs> you know, they were coins yes. the weather girls after the song, not weather menstruators or whatever is now the <laughs> PC term for them. And it's funny, they're dressed as weather forecasters. They're predicting it's going to start raining men and men start falling down from the sky. In the new music video, you have Myla Jam, who is the singer of the song, kind of with barely nothing on, sprawled across the floor. It leaves very little to the imagination. And yeah, it's lost a lot of the essence of the song. Now, you see, look, just widening um, the subject, because we could probably talk for quite a long time about <laughs> wokey things that are going on. But actually, when I'm in my sort of more rational moments, which are getting fewer and fewer these days, I sit back and I think, am I just becoming a grumpy old man? And I try and remember my grandfather and my father, and they would, they would talk to me about, you've got long hair, 
right? You've got long hair. You look like you look like a well. I can't really say those words now. I'd probably be kicked off air. But <laughs> but basically, basically, you, you look a Wally amongst other things, but in, in a, a more colourful language. And and I just wonder, you know, is it me? Am I just a grumpy old so and so? And I need to get with it because the the rational part of me is kind of trying to challenge what. Uh, my my own views and i need to get with it you, uh, is is that do you think i need to get with it i mean i think you're with it enough i think it's just the pre-slope that these people are doing in it's not really achieving anything it's logically flawed like you said god bless mother nature they're a single person too if you're a mother you're probably you know why aren't you a woman as mother father men women um makes sense And, and cancelled out and, and attacked viciously. Uh, th there is a, a darker side to, to these sorts of things. We can ridicule certain things and you can probably just get away with it. Who knows who I'm winding up just by having, having, having yeah. this, this interview. But, but that's when the big part of me doesn't want to surrender the ground. Um, because I, I, do, I do think that, you know, in this, it's often a case of here, who's loudest? Who makes the biggest noise? They win the argument, and you start to get, you start to see supermarket chains and and and, and organisations <laughs> changing policies, uh, and and Ben and Jerry's been been a good example. But if you were to be objective, and and as a commentator and a writer, uh, do, do 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 you feel that the woke movement, if you like, is gaining ground, or is there a limit to how much ga uh, ground it can it can gain? I mean, they definitely seem to be the loudest voice in, out there. Um, maybe the people who believe in a different reality don't speak up loud enough. Um, but yeah, I think this, especially on trans issues, like of course, I don't think anyone's saying that people shouldn't be respected, um, but it's different from that and then pushing the idea that they them theirs, we all have to say this to respect people, we can't refer to mothers as women. It yeah. certainly starts well, being a little bit more personal against half the population. Well, I think there was something, and again, uh, I, forgive me, I haven't done my research on this, but my, my, my um, daughter pointed this out to me, and she's a doctor, and she said there was a hospital, I think, that said there would be no longer be breastfeeding, but it would be chest feeding. Which is, yeah, insane. Insane. Uh, now, Martin Daubney, right, a co co commentator here, he, he's just put, he put a tweet out that drew my attention. And he, I can't, quite, um, I can't quite use all the words, but on this reigning man thing, he basically said more woke rubbish as the classic reigning <laughs> men is reworked as reigning them, quote, to use more inclusive pronouns. He went, actually, as there are more men than thems, it's the opposite. And I think there is a sense here that there is a minority that has a huge vocal voice that is driving the agenda mm -hmm. now yeah. the answer is do we have to get more vocal in our opposition to this well i mean so far what has i don't know what that's yielded for better or worse jk rowling was vocal and i think that was good because people supported her but also many people cancelled her which is crazy is as far as you ask me and it's also if people were advocating that trans people can't like buy a house can't have an education then of course that is a huge injustice but the idea that even to raise hang on a minute we need to have a conversation about whether a trans person can use a woman's bathroom to that is then just shot down as no 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 you hate trans people isn't going exactly. to have a conversation exactly. which is infuriating and, and if you talk if you talk about the same issue with prisons um uh, you know going mm -hmm. into uh, trans people going into uh, uh, a female prison or whatever wh whatever yeah. way around it is the, the 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 immediate thing is you're attacking the rights you are uh, you are uh, phobic um yeah. which frankly is absolutely appalling intimidation
No, you're enti- it's insulting. That. Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's We're going to get in so much trouble. For this show. I know. We, we <laughs> I don't are, want to look I'm at just, Twitter after this. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the Twitter feed to kick off. But but Which thank is you so for. Sad. Well, it is, but I just there there is the mute button, and so many of these <laughs> strident voices they get annoyed if you don't block them because then they can say, "Oh, look, I've been blocked." So just quietly use the mute button. You know, it's it's a great button to use and you don't often hear from them again. And they ha- carry on in their little echo chamber in their own little world talking to themselves. Meanwhile, we shall crack on and try and be as um, uh, uh, as as vocal as we can. Portia Barry Kilby, political contributor to Young Voice UK, writer and commentator. Thank you so much for joining me. I kind of when 